You see, one of the most ironic things uh, with this whole uh, George Floyd, uh, you know, tragedy and travesty and situation, something that I don't hear a lot of people uh, talking about, you know, some people have mentioned it, but not as I'm not hearing it. I'm not seeing many people making comments about this is the fact that George Floyd was a brother in Christ. He was a believer. And not only, uh, you know, like a quiet believer, but he was really doing some good work with the youth. You know, we, we see this picture of him raising his Bible. And so I look at that picture and I'm saying, that could, that could be me. You know, we have a ministry where we are recording videos. I have a, you know, high interest of, of, of becoming a seminary student. Whenever I can, I, I do assist and... Uh, uh, provide some guidance to some people. I speak to some young people sometimes. So that could be that could be me. And so it's very sad to watch the memory of a real brother in Christ, a true believer who was doing actual work impacting the lives of people. And then on the other hand, you have cultural Christians that are more about defending America, about defending capitalism, about defending the police force, about de defending the army and all these things. We have those set of people over there, which I would, I would, I would um, categorize as cultural Christians, talking about all kinds of things, not only, ex not only excusing, but making less of this whole travesty, this whole debacle. And I'm thinking, hmm, this is ironic. And so when I think about Christian cultural Christians, and I think about the foundations of the beginning of this country, and I think about stuff like what Josh Boyce, Boyce is saying as far as, you know, he, he said, and then, you know, someone just told me on Twitter, uh, on an opening video or article that he wrote as, as, as part of a, sort of a response or addressing this whole situation. One of the first things that he says is, well, um, I have a white cop friend that was killed in Kentucky, which is the state I live in. And we are still waiting for um, this to be resolved or, you know, the, the culpable people to be sentenced or, you know, whatever. And I'm thinking this is precisely how America got the way it is. Let's not make any mistake here. It was cultural Christians that put in put in clauses in the constitution to not only you know some of them uh, the delegate from south carolina i forget his name was trying to perpetuate slavery forever then eventually he had to go back uh and took, i think it to, he took two or three weeks to come up with a better uh resolution for this for the constitution but it's because of cultural christians that we have stuff like uh, the three-fifths which is, you know, Republicans, you know, it was not their fault. I understand where they were coming from. You know, the, it, was a, it was a matter of representation and a matter of taxation. I understand the whole debacle. So they had to do the best they could. But it was cultural Christians on the other side, the slave masters, the slaveholders down in Georgia and the Carolinas and, and all these uh, southern states advocating for slavery. It was cultural Christians... Uh, who said we are, you know, uh, separate but equal. It was cultural Christians that uh, put in place uh, things like, uh, you know, the, the, the white man would always, always be superior to the black man. It was cultural Christians that said, uh, if you loot, we shoot. It was, it was cultural Christians that said, you know, the biblically, biblically supported, biblically supported the idea of segregation. You have to be there. We have to be here because we cannot mix races together. I think they went to the book of Acts to support that kind of stuff. It was cultural Christians back in my beloved country where, you know, my mother got told by a Southern Baptist pastor in an American base, as I said, in, you know, the Panama Canal area, she was told you're not invited, you know, with a very nice smile and with great words, right? Uh, she was told, you know, why don't you go and visit 
a church with people that look like you. You know, you're pretty much you're not welcome here. It was cultural Christians that told my dad when he came to Alabama for a training, he was working for the, you know, both of them, both of my parents were for the canal. And, you know, he, he, he came to, uh, for a training to Alabama. He stayed here for a month. And, you know, he's a Christian man. He wanted to visit a church. And he visited this church in Alabama a couple of times. And after, you know, he when he was leaving the second time, a couple of deacons and the pastor approached him and said, you know, uh, we appreciate that you want to come here. And we, pre we appreciate that you're bringing your offerings and stuff like that over here. But uh, don't you think it would be better for you to visit this other church which is just, you know, a, a few blocks from here so they can worship with people that, you know, people that you will feel more comfortable worshiping with. It is, and it is also very uh, cultural Christians, Christians that don't understand the Bible and have no sympathy for the plight, for the horrors that other ethnicities are going through, because it's not only blacks and it's not only here in America. But to sit there and say, like uh, one of the uh, you know one of the minions of 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 of, of James White, a, a black English guy, saying you know uh, violence is not the solution and looting. Uh, why are we destroying? Why why don't these people come up with these great ideas and these great tweets before the police starts? So it's it's a matter of trying to understand. You know. People react the way they react. And yes, it's sinful, it's not good, but you also have to understand the humanity of the people that are going through certain things. If you are provoked and then you retaliate and you've been provoked for, let's say 400 years, <laughs> and you've been told that you are a lesser man and a lesser woman, that the the best thing that can happen to you is for me to, to be a slave for this person because we're going to provide you with water, with a place for you to rest, with food. When you've been told forever that you don't need to be educated because that's not your place and that's not the role that God has called you to. When you've been told for decades that you cannot live in certain neighborhoods, when you've been robbed and bamboozled for decades, or I'll give you an example, Reconstruction era, right? You know, African-Americans celebrate 10, 12 years of, of, of freedom, not having to deal with uh, slavery and mistreatment. But then the other side finds holes and ways, very crafty ways to, uh, you, know, you know, with a handshake deal, you're going to take away the troops from the union that were there to protect your rights. So they betray you, they abandon you. And of course, all those benefits that you had were rolled back. And then stuff like Jim Crow was installed. You were not able, your, your lands are, are stolen. You're thrown in jail for men, men, uh, menial crimes such as being outside for for uh, too, uh, too late at night or uh, being a bum <laughs> walking around doing nothing and then thrown in jail and forced to work you're not giving a lawyer you're not giving a, tr a trial no due process but then you end up in the same place that you were supposed to be taken from with these new deals you can buy homes in certain areas. Your lands are stolen. You can get education because you cannot go to certain schools. And the schools that you're supposed to go to are a piece of crap, underfunded. While at the same time you're being, you know, taxed perhaps. As, a doc as Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King said in one of his speeches, uh, you know, all these other, you know, uh, white people are being, uh, given the best schools, they're given, being given support, they're being funded when they start their businesses, they're being, uh, they're, they're, they're getting help from the government. Blacks don't get any of that. Blacks can't even buy homes in certain areas. Guys go to the Olympics, they were, uh, win what, four medals, four gold medals. Hitler, of course, doesn't want to shake his hand. The president of the U.S., I forget who it was, doesn't want to shake hands with him. 
After a couple of weeks, they throw a party for him. But for him to join the party, he has to go through the kitchen because, of course, blacks cannot go through the main entrance. So you have that over and over and over and over again. And Judge Boyce, Boyce or however you pronounce his name, he wants to come to us and tell us that uh, he, he wants to talk about his white cop friend that was killed. And of course, we don't want anyone to die. But for you to compare that situation with the situation that I'm describing, just roughly, superficial, uh, superficially giving you some details, you want to compare that to this? Really? That's called being evil. That's, that's, called, that's what the devil does. Because the, the, the devil is a father of lies. To confuse, to distract, to rob people from the truth. That's crazy. Who, who does that? And then for you to come here and say, well, uh, we, we need to be respectful and patient. How much more patience do you want? What else do you want people to do? If some dude over here protests peacefully, and again, I'm not a fan of Colin Kaepernick. I think he's a tool, to be honest with you. I think he's a tool. He, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He, he doesn't represent blacks. He doesn't represent, like he doesn't, he, he hasn't gone through the black experience. But besides that, forget that. You have a dude, the point I'm trying to make is, you have a dude peacefully protesting and he gets ostracized, he gets criticized. People invent this nonsense of, well, he's disrespecting the flag, which is a bunch of garbage. Because you also have black military people who from the way back when were dying for that flag, were dying for freedom of uh, this supposed America to come back to a place, to a home where they were going to be discriminated. They were not getting medals of honor. All right. They had to eat food with different people. As a matter of fact, I even heard that, we, you know, after the Second World War, when all these troops are coming back, they're still fighting in fight, fist fighting in the way back because of racism and discrimination. So when people talk about, you know, you're disrespecting the flag. Well, this flag represents us all, number one. And for th this flag, under this flag, segregation and racism and all kinds of inequalities were being perpetrated. So what are you talking about? So you have Callum Ka Kaepernick protesting that peacefully. You criticize him. You blast him. And then you have a few young kids that don't have your own, your emotional intelligence reacting in crazy ways. And of course, we have to admit Antifa people and all kinds of crazy fools are participating in this, hijacking a movement that doesn't belong to them. But still, the point remains. How can you not see the frustration that people are going through with this? How can you ask someone to deal for so long with their frustration? And the first thing that you say is, well, if you loot, we shoot. Which again is, were words uttered by a segregationist way back when, I think in the 60s or something. And so what do you want? But here's my main point. A Christian, a Christian man, man died. And Christians, there are some Christians out there that instead of dealing with that, they want to jump to excuses. They want to distract. They want to talk about critical race theory. They want to talk about uh, socialism. And they want to talk about, you know, whatever. They don't face the facts. They don't face the facts. And so when we think about persecution in other places don't go that far see it right here black people and black christians and black churches have been persecuted forever <laughs> forever and we've had to deal with this kind of stuff even in my country deal with this kind of stuff forever our churches were being born uh, burned to the ground our ministers were getting killed, shot at. Our children were not allowed to, to have a good education. We were not allowed to go to restaurants. 
we were not allowed to do a number of things. And for you to act as if this is something that started yesterday or, you know, bring up these excuses. And for you to believe that the Bible doesn't address injustices. I want to ask you, do you even know God? Have you read your Bible? Who taught you that to that sin is some sort of abstract thing, the immaterial thing that you just have to tackle and preach against and kill it? Don't you realize that sin demonstrates itself in people through different actions? Because we do, of course, we, we do understand and realize that original sin is something that was in us before we even committed certain acts or cert said certain words or had certain thoughts. But sin is also stuff that we do. It, mater it materializes itself just like righteousness materializes itself in real words, in real deeds, in standing up for certain things. The same way that you guys that are so adamant about criticizing critical real, uh, race theory and acting as if sin is just a abstract thing, that's these same guys, this same crowd are going to be up in arms to try to make abortion murder and to disavow it, to disenfranchise it, get it out of our system. Oh, but here it is a material thing, but not over here. You think it is an injustice against a fetus, a baby, which I, of course, advocate for, but you don't want to advocate for injustices against uh, black people. And you minimize it, you ignore it, you silence it. You discard it as some, you know, just as critical race theory. How does that work? And that same Baptist tradition was up in arms to destroy sin in the form of the prohibition era, tackling drunkenness and, 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 and liquor and the production of liquor and all those things. Oh yeah, that's a thing that we have to fight and get out of our societies. But at the same time, all kinds of injustices were happening against blacks and Native Americans. How does that work? Oh, now you're, you're going to dis discard me because I'm only a critical race theory, a social justice warrior. Is that how it works? So what do you do with Ezekiel and Isaiah when they are decrying and judging people and telling them you need to repent because all these people are being he talks about the slaves they don't get their jubilee year and uh, and and, and uh, the widow is not getting uh um treated with dignity and back when jesus uh came around giving dignity to samaritans well it, cultural Christians back in those days would have been saying, why is Jesus uh, taking, uh, even addressing this kind of social issues? Man, you should only be preaching the gospel and preaching against sin. Man, we, I don't... And I said, as I said, I've only been in this country for six years. And by the grace of God, to my knowledge, I didn't have any... I did have forefathers that were slaves, but more in the Caribbean and in Jamaica, to be more specific, in Barbados with the sugar cane thing. So to my knowledge, I don't think I have to do more research. I didn't have any uh, slave ancestry here. But I understand the frustration of my brothers and sisters, black brothers and sisters, who have lived here, who have had stories told to them by their fathers and their grandparents and the great great grandparents and going all the way back to slavery and having to read of all these abuses always being behind the behind the eight ball not having even the dignity until maybe a couple decades ago to buy their own homes to get education to eat in the same cafeteria to see black man after black man after black man being killed and see the church always come up with the same response over and over and over again, dealing with it as if, well, that doesn't exist. It's something minor. The church is not called to deal with that. Until when? And, she, and it's, so, you know, I, I told a friend here in confidence, I'm, I told him, if there's any people that, if there's a people group that is, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a people group that is more resilient and have dealt with more crap 
than African Americans in this country, maybe Native Americans. But it's unbelievable. Like the playing field is so slanted against against us. Against it's unbelievable. What, what, what else do you want? And so, and so there we go. There we go. Another another black, another Christian guy got killed. Now they're trying to find excuses such as, well, he had a, a health condition that probably helped in, in the, you know, his asphyxiation, you know, <laughs> I, I, I guess they're going to try to go into his past and, and find, um, you know, maybe he smoked pot, sold pot when he was 13 years old in his high school. Uh, he had two kids out of wedlock. You know, he got into fist fights when he was in, in college or whatever. He wasn't. He didn't pay his direct uh, TV bill on time once or twice, and for these reasons, well, we shouldn't act as if he is this angel, this great guy. He 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 had a troubled past, and so, of course, what you're doing when you do and say all these kind of things is you're trying to, you know, kind of poo-poo the fact that he got killed by a cop in plain daylight, like a like a monkey, like a like a like a slave with no value. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think that the worst thing that that happened in this country, and yeah, you, you are gonna, you know, disagree with me. But this whole notion of 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 of, of uh, telling people that this is a Christian nation, that you know, enforcing uh, th th this idea that you should read the Bible in school. And I wonder, how helpful is that? Because if you, yeah, you, yeah, there is a point there, to be made that you give a child um, high hopes by letting him read the Bible in his own, in school, mandatory reading of the scripture, mandatory uh, prayer and that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's some value in that. But at the same time, I see a great deal of danger because it's be precisely because of these practices. People that are disenfranchised from churches, they haven't really heard, that are not really under the care of a pastor, right? Who, because you said some prayer when you were 10 years old, but you never were a part of a church. You never understood what the sacraments are about. You never understood law and gospel. And you were told by someone that to be a Christian is to respect the nation and to be a nationalist and to defend for defend the, your gun rights. And this, you know, all these ideas. And couple that with this, with the um, with the myths that certain people have as far as the foundation of this country that the Constitution was about the rights for everybody and for Native Americans, for, which is a bunch of crap. Without really telling them what, what was going on. And you grab this child, believing all these myths, turning the Bible and twisting the Bible to fit the mold of some nationalists, some 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 individual that wants to defend slavery or defend uh, your ethnic superiority or you know the, your national superiority in comparison to other people, and then you unleash them on the roads. That's what you get. That's how you get guys like Josh Boyce and James White and many other crazies out there that, in the name of Christ, supposedly are saying, "Man." All these black people are dying over there. I see what's going on. But you know what? As a Christian, that's not my, it's not my duty. As a matter of fact, and as a matter of fact, they will get more, more up in arms and grab the Bibles to defend the idea that social order is so important <laughs> and respect for the authorities, i.e. the cops and the governors and stuff like that, while at the same time, seeing a, a Christian brother getting asphyxiated, some other white dude 
step on his neck for 10 or 9 or 8 minutes, get killed, but you don't have much to say about that. I think that's problematic. And it's perhaps it's something that we'll only see fix in the next 30, 40, 50 years when this kind of Christianity has disappears from the earth. Maybe it'll never disappear from earth. But it's problematic. That's all I had to say. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy.